Hi, I'm Paul Dayball from Niagara College. And today I'm going to do a short video on how to set up a large document using style sheets. Uh, also on a side note, I'm going to show how to um, replace bullets and uh, create bullets not using the bullet button in Microsoft Word. So first thing we're going to do is set up the margins. I'm going to do that under Format the Document. And it is in centimeters, but I know that the way I'd like to work is in inches. So I have two choices. I can either go and change the, uh, the settings for the rulers to inches, or I can just go here and use the units that are here, but actually have the computer do the exchange from inches over to centimeters. So it does all the conversion for me. So all I gotta do is I, I'm gonna put 0.5, half an inch for the top, and 0.5 inches for the bottom. And you can see that I put the double quote mark indicating the inches. Uh, the computer will automatically know that I'm trying to work in inches and it'll convert it back to centimeters for me. And the sides, I'm going to put at 0.75, just leaving the sides a little longer, a little wider than the uh, top and bottom. So let's see. All right, so there we are, all set up. The first thing I'm going to do is um, change all of these uh, asterisks and space, um, and I'd like to change them to a bullet and a tab. Uh, I need um, a tab to make the bullet work properly. So to do that, I'm going to go up here and get this little sidebar. And in there, you can see that I can get search pane. So that opens up this search pane. I'm going to go into the search document, and I'm going to put in an asterisk, which is uh, shift 8 and a space. And you can see that it finds it right away. And it starts showing me in yellow all of the uh, asterisks and a space that are in the document. I'm going to replace it with a bullet. Bullets are found by hitting option eight. It gives you the round bullet. And I can't just hit tab on the keyboard to put the tab character in. I have to go over here and select it from a list of special characters. You can see that's the symbol for the tab character for Microsoft Word. So I'm going to go ahead and hit replace all. And you can see that now uh, we have the bullet and the little blue mark. And incidentally, the blue marks can be turned on right here. And this is a show non-printing characters. I always have them on. They're the most useful thing as far as uh, uh, typesetting and, and redesigning a document. They really help into what is there and uh, what is wrong or what is missing. Now that I've uh, got all those replaced, I'm going to go ahead and take this one paragraph up here. And I'm going to uh, keep it as a times, and I'm going to leave it 12 points. That should be just fine. But I'm going to do a little bit of an indent. This is the first line indent. I'm going to do a first line indent. Uh, just so my, my paragraphs are indented a bit. Now that I've set up what I think is my standard body copy, I want the entire uh, document to be body copy, and uh, I want it so that it's now my styles. So I'm going to say new style over here, and I'm going to put in uh, the words my style. And I'm going to put body copy. That's what I want to call this. And I'm going to say this is based on no style. So down uh, here, it actually says this is all the information about that style. And I can say no style so that it's not based on anything. If something else changes, this is not going to change. This is style all onto its own. So I'm going to say OK. I'm going to select the entire document. Two ways of doing that. I can go up here. Um, under edit and say select all or you can see that the little propeller symbol there is command symbol um, I can also hit that and a so I'm going to do that I'm going to hold down command hit a and I get the whole document over here I'm going to now select my style and it gets attached to all of the documents so you can see that all the way down through my document I have uh, everywhere I have an indent so here's the bullets that I was talking about I'm going to uh, grab a couple of them and I'm going to do what's called a hanging indent. So this is the first line up here. You see, this is the first line. This one here is called hanging. It's the upward pointing arrow. And the bottom little piece there is called left indent. I'm going to bring them back together to show you what happens. You can see that the, the uh, bullet is moving in and out. So I'm going to move this across. And you can see that I'm moving everything. And then when I move the top back, the bullet will come with me. But the tab forces the first the rest of the first line over to where the hanging indent is set. That is a Microsoft Word thing. Some programs you actually have to put a tab character or a tab setting at the hanging indent to make that work properly. But here, this is how it works. 
I'm also going to go ahead and make that um, 11 point type. That's going to be the size of my bullet. Now I'm going to create a new style. My style, bullet one, because I, I have another bullet later on. I'm going to leave it based on body copy. That way, if I decide to change something in the body copy, example, the font that's being used, it'll automatically change bullet one. That's called a cascading style sheet. You can see over here that the style has been created. My style body copy is there. And then indented underneath, because it is based on body copy, is the bullet one style. And if you roll over, it says that this is based on my body copy. And then it's got a few extra changes, like the size of the type was changed. And there's a hanging indent and left indent. All right, so now all I have to do is go back and select. Now, I'm going to have to select that bullet because even though I created that bullet, uh, that style using that bullet, it doesn't get automatically applied to it. Now, all I have to do is click body copy or bullet one, I mean. I'm sorry, bullet one. Um, it'll automatically create all that as a bullet. I'm going to roll down a little bit. Um, I had to get rid of the extra uh, bullet mark that was there. It wasn't supposed to be there. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit of this. Uh, this is a subhead, and I'm going to uh, pull it back so it's not indented. I'm going to change that one to a sans serif font. I'm going to change it over to Arial. And make it bold. And there we go. You notice the rest of it's not that way, but that's what I want my style to look like, so I'll make a style there. So I'll make new style. I'm going to call this subhead one. Now, I don't want this based on body copy. I'm going to base it on no style because I do not want it to change. If I change the body copy, I don't want this one changing. So this is a top level style. So I'm going to say no style. And then I might base subhead two on subhead one, but I don't want any, this based on anything else. I'm going to say OK. Now you can see over here that my style has been created. The subhead one style has been created, but it hasn't actually been applied to this because it still says body copy. The blue mark is around body copy. So to do it, I'd actually have to select it. All right, so we have a couple styles now. Now we can just go down through. Notice that I'm not selecting the entire headline, just a portion of it. And as long as I have a portion of that paragraph selected, this is a paragraph style, so it'll go with the entire paragraph. I'm going to uh, grab a bunch of these bullets. I'm going to make all of these bullet one. And I've got a couple of bullets in here that need to have a different style. So I'm going to select those and I'm going to pull it across. Actually, I'll just uh, select two and then we'll apply it to the other one. I'm going to just pull the left indent across so that it's over a ways, just so it's indented a bit more. And I can kind of move that a little bit. And I'm going to create a new style. Now, the current style on this is bullet one. And I want to create a bullet two. So I'm going to say new style and it's based on bullet one. So if bullet one changes, it'll also do some changes to this one. And this will be bullet two. And then now I can apply it. I have to apply it to those. It's not actually been applied yet. And I can say bullet two and you can see that that's indented. Okay, I'm going to go down through now. Now I've got uh, a few things set up. So there's a, a subhead and I'll just uh, wander down through the document here, uh, setting up style. So I select these, it's a bullet. This is a subhead. There's a subhead here. bullet. It really does make it a lot faster when you have um, all of the style sheets set up as you go through your document. And when you're making a new document, of course, what you would do is as you're creating the document, you're also creating the style sheets as you use them as you go along. Now, what this will allow us to do is go back later on and um, um, and make some changes to the style and it should change the whole document. We'll, we'll see how that works later. Here is a subhead two. Um, so I'm going to make it a subhead one and I'm going to make it not bold and italic and I'm going to indent it a little bit. Notice that I'm just working with a portion of it. Um, this portion right here is what I'm working with, but as long as that's selected, I can make my style from that. 
So I'll just go ahead and make new style. See that it's now based on subhead one since I made it the subhead one first and then I changed it. So this will be uh, subhead two. I can go ahead and save it here. I'll click here on, uh, I'll have to scroll down a little bit, on subhead two, and you can see that that change has been made. Well, that'll be easier, right? As I can go down, I can just say subhead two. There's a subhead two. I have a bullet here. Oh, bullet one. Yeah, it should be bullet one. I have some bullets up here. Now, there is a lot of extra spaces and stuff. We'll deal with that um, near the end of this. Um, it's much easier if you can just go ahead and get all of your um, style sheets attached to everything. Uh, once you do that, it makes things a lot easier at the end. There. So, throw out the document now. Looking much better. Okay, the next thing we're going to deal with is all these extra uh, paragraph returns. Uh, in you know, when I'm working, I don't want any extra paragraph returns. I would use space after a paragraph or space before a paragraph, something like that. But I really try to remove all the extra paragraph returns and all the extra spaces. If I got to use you know six spaces somewhere, I might as well use a tab. So um, I'm going to remove all of the extra paragraph returns. Now, I guess I could go through the whole document and do it one by one. It just seems long and tedious, and there's a fast way to do it. So we're going to go back to the search pane. And in the search document area, I'm going to put in two paragraph marks. And that will automatically find. You can see over here that it's finding two paragraph marks. I'm going to replace it with just one. So anywhere that it finds two, it's going to replace it with one. Now, it's rolled down through. There must have been three in some locations because it would have found two replaced with one, and then it would have found one. So I'm just going to hit the uh, button twice, and now I'm done. And you can see that I've now removed all of the extra paragraph returns throughout this document very, very quickly, actually. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, work on this top. Now, the top is a uh, kind of a one-off, so I'm not going to make a style sheet for it. But I am going to make it Arial. I'm going to make it bold, and I'm going to make it about 22 points. And I'm going to take off the indent so it's right up against. I'm going to put some space after so I have room here. And um, I know that this is you know, probably best at about uh, 20 points. Space after space before is really great. That uh, whole format paragraph. This is a really useful box and you should really get to understand what's in there. There's also some really interesting stuff under line breaks. Um, really uh, kind of a, a, a good area for a person working with Microsoft Word to really understand. I'm gonna click at the uh, front of I and improving and I'm going to insert a photo. So I'm gonna do this uh, insert photo um, from picture from file because I have actually a file I'm, I'm gonna be working with here. On my desk, I have a, a folder here, and I've got this little uh, Ontario.gif. So it's just a, an old Ontario logo we're going to stick in here. I'm going to double click on it, and that's going to bring up this, and we're going to do a text wrap. Now, the way it's working right now is this is an inline graphic, which means that it is actually part of the text. If you just type in front of it, it will move along as if it's just a letter in the text. But what we're going to do is we're going to make it a separate uh, item and what's called a layer. So this is going to be tight, and you can see that this now wraps around. I'm going to do a little bit of cropping and get rid of some of this. It has a line at the bottom I don't need. So I'm going to turn on the cropping. To get to the uh, cropping tool, you'll notice that this icon is a four-way arrow. If I go all the way to the bottom, it's a two-way arrow. So that is for sizing. The one in between, this icon right here, is the one I need. So I'm going to pull that up. 
and I'm going to crop this piece and I'm going to go to the side and I'm going to look for the one on the side and I'm going to crop it in a little bit uh, until I get the look I want. And I think that looks pretty good. Next, we're going to deal with um, the actual spacing within the document. You can see that things are, um, you, you can see where the headings are, but uh, spacing really makes it stand out for the reader as to where things are. So this one, style sheet is subhead one. So if we change this one, we should be able to change all of them at once that are already marked as subhead one. So I'm going to bring up this uh, paragraph piece and I'm going to put um, eight points of space before and two points of space after. And I'm going to take a look what that looks like. And that looks pretty good. All I have to do now to apply it to all of them is to go over here and you'll notice that when I roll over this, I go to this little box at the end and it says update to match the selection. In other words, it's going to update the style subhead one to match whatever I have selected on the screen right now. So I have, um, the only thing I've actually changed is spacing. If I say to update to match the selection, all of the document changed. So as you can see, all the way down, I have changes. It doesn't really matter where in the document I do this. Uh, you'll be able to see, I'm going to uh, grab a couple bullets right here. These are bullet one. I'm just going to grab this bullet and I'm going to say that I want to put um, six points or six points of space or five points. I'll put five points of space before it. What do you think? That looks okay. I'm going to update to match the selection. And we will see throughout the entire document that uh, space got put around the bullets. I also started looking at this and I think, you know, it'd be kind of great if the bullets stood a little more. So um, maybe what I can do is just pull in this right indent like that. And then I'm going to pull it across a little bit. And you can just see that I'm just, I'm kind of playing with the look of it. And I got that the one I want. And I can say update to match the selection. And the bullets throughout the entire document get changed automatically. All right, so let's see how our document looks. There. I'll turn off the show invisibles now. And you can see there that this document has a pretty good look to it now. The uh, spacing is pretty good. And uh, that's how you use style sheets to control a document in Microsoft Word. Thank you for listening.